Hey everybody, welcome back to the series, New Beginnings in Edgewater. I'd just like to start off with thanking every single one of you for the response that I've seen so far. Uh, we're at about 2,400 views on the series as a total, averaging about two to 400 views of video. Uh, honestly, I never expected it to, to get nearly as much traction as it has. Um, and we're almost at 100 subscribers at the time of recording. So if you're watching this, um, why not consider subscribing? Help me out a little bit and uh, we'll keep the series going. Now you may have heard some sniffing there in the background. Um, it's it's August in the series. We've, we've skipped time a little bit and there's a few things I need to show you. Uh, first off, there's a big Meridian bin here. And second off, is this little addition to the house. So I got a new dog. I have no idea. Yeah, no idea where it's gotten to. Um, we need a name for the dog. So let me know down in the comments if I can grab the ball. Maybe I can throw the ball and maybe we can find the pooch. There he is. What should we name this little guy? So, this was uh, mainly in response to the to the theft earlier in the series. Uh, got a watchdog, got a gate, but Watchdog needs a name. He's such a sweet dog. Where is he going? Go get the ball, buddy. But anyway, on to farm work now. Hop in the gator. And we're going to go check out some of the new stuff. So I spoke earlier about this Meridian bin. It is new, it was cheap, it is used. So we got that one, uh, $7,000 I think that was last month. Do we have somewhere to store our grain? I've been through everything. You can see the toolbox in the back of the gator here. Uh, I've been through, I've touched up everything. So everything is fully repaired. I uh, did move the trailer. Did a bunch more gravel work here, just to kind of tidy the yard up. Cut down a couple of little scraggly trees here, put in a new light. Everything over there, I think, stayed the same, I think. Obviously, we got the big horse here. Uh, we should check on the bales here, just while we're at it. And by the way, this grass is ready to cut. It is on stage four, so uh, thank you for pointing that out. I always forget that I need to wait an extra month to get the extra yield out of this. So thank you for that. Turn the HUD on here. 64% fermenting. It's, that's ready to go and this should say yeah, ready to harvest. It's no longer stage 3 out of 3. It's just ready to harvest. So that's good to go. And I think the biggest thing that you guys have missed so far is just off to our right here. We'll see that in a second. We're just going to check on this crop real quick. This wheat is clearly ready to go. Ready to harvest. Expected yield is 64%. That's sad, honestly. But, I mean, to be fair, Leroy, when he put it in, he didn't put any extra fertilizer in. It was, it was just bare minimums. And then we took it over, and we never did anything for it, so we just sprayed the weeds. As so we come over here, we now have a bridge here, and this is big enough for the 8960. Did test that. And this crop looks much the same. Expected yield, 56%. Ugh. Well... I mean, clearly the series, we're not about making money, so we're about spending it.
Uh, this is all for us in the yard. I do have to run down to Leroy's. He needs help with his combine. I guess there's a, a couple of things not working for it. So he's going to pay us a little bit for our time. Um, then I have to go down to the dealership and pick up a, uh, a surprise for you. And the eagle eyed among you might have noticed the bank balance has gone down quite a bit. But trust me when I say it's worth it. All right, just pulling into Leroy's here. Looks like he's all loaded up for something. He's got the animal trailer there. I don't think he has any animals. I think his kids do, though. Um, start with the combine header, I think. Then we'll jump over to the combine itself. Oh, he's got himself a new wrapper. That's nice. Okay. Let's dig into this a little bit. We'll find out what's going on. Okay, so just spoke to Leroy. He's uh, He's gone to pick up some animals for his kid. Uh, Davey, I think he said his name was. Uh, Says he's a nice enough kid, he's a little slow. But he's getting into animals, and Leroy's gonna give him a hand. Leroy's a really nice guy, I like him. But the deal is, I fix the header, I fix the combine, and I get an auger out of the deal. But I've also spotted a few other things out back here. That's a really nice tip trailer. That's a really nice bale trailer. Massey's kind of cool. And there seems to have an abundance of uh, wrappers. Let's we'll see if we can make a deal. I mean, clearly he uses them. But maybe we can make a deal. Maybe we can take a few pieces of equipment home today. Or maybe tomorrow. Or maybe work out a deal. But anyway. Alright, it is now 12.30 in the afternoon. The header has been repaired. It was a bunch of the cutters on it, a couple fingers, and one of the belts on it needed to be replaced. Uh, not too bad, just takes time. Went through the combine. Best I could find is that it needed an oil change. That wasn't too bad. And one of the taillights was out, so whatever, right? Uh, we got paid 4500 for our time. Let's, uh, let's get packed up and let's get out of here. We are clear to take the auger straight away, so we're going to grab the auger, bring it home, and uh, where did it go? I wrote this down. The tip trailer he wants 1500 for, and the bale trailer he wants 500 for. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to pay him for them right off the bat, and then we're just going to come grab them when we need them. It's not like he's terribly short on space. And I'm sure he won't mind if they sit for another day or two before I collect them. It might not be the sketchiest thing I've ever done. But at least it clears the power lines. We talked to Leroy. He's letting us take the bale trailer home today. We already paid for it and the tip trailer. If you remember the auger is freebie for the work that we did. Let's get this stuff home and uh, maybe even get it washed, I think. Okay. That was a lot of effort, but... Got it off the trailer, got it washed up. Got the trailer parked over here, got it washed up. So we're getting really close to being able to harvest. Which reminds me, I've got to give Mark a call, see if he can give me a ride down to the dealership. All right. 
Mark just dropped us off. And here she is. That ratty old 1175 that's been sitting here that nobody wants. It's my problem now. And while we're here, looks like they've done a dealer swap for a lot of equipment here. Go check out what they got going on here. Got a nice massy swather here. Nice big cutting head on it. What do we have here? 9860 with the bullet rotor. It's pretty fancy. This is the same S670 that's been here for a while. Nice big 9R, 8RT. That's a pretty decent looking tractor. John Deere Quick Bale. And it looks like they've got some tillage stuff. I don't think for a second that even the big horse at home would pull this thing up to speed. These three, I think, could probably. Yeah, might be able to handle these three. We'll go talk to Mark real quick, see what's up. And this thing looks like it's in for some service, which is not good because it's just at the start of harvest. But yeah, let's go talk to Mark real quick and see what he's got for us. Okay, just talk to Mark. Uh, one quick thing about this 690 is the bubble up auger failed. So I guess one of the pins had slopped out on the, the hinge mechanism for it for when the top folds. And when it quit, the auger stopped turning. So the clean grain auger here just piled up and it's taken out just about the entire higher right side here so he's got the auger itself is concaved the pulley bracket I turn my head on you can see where I'm pointing here this bracket right here is bent so that these pulleys are all out of alignment there's about three pulleys up top here they've all bent and the chain the auger itself snapped so I don't want to touch this thing because He's in for probably $30,000 in repairs on this thing, which is more than what we spent on our combine. Um, but back to what we were just chatting about here with the tillage stuff. This 2680, what's 105k for it, and it takes about 560 horse. Yeah, not a chance. 2410 plow, he wants 24k. This thing he wants 32k. This thing here, the 2660 VT, this is an old demo. So it is houred out. Um, not in the greatest shape, to be honest. But he only wants 12k for it. So. That's, that's highly tempting, because it's something that the big horse can pull. And it might have to come home with us, preferably sooner than later. It's got choppers and rollers on the back. Yeah, this would be pretty sweet. But it's going to have to wait. Let's jump in the combine. And let's get moving some grain. Now the big question, does this fit through the gate? Yes, it does. You imagine trying to pull an X9 through there with a set of duels and 50 foot header? Yeah, not gonna happen. Though, they do have an X9 demo. Pretty sure we would do these fields in like four minutes with that thing. And I don't think we'd have to empty it once. Alright, let's get this thing pulled into the yard. We'll give it a quick once over. I know the mechanics over at Clever did. But I still want to go through it myself. If there's anything that it needs, anything that they might have missed that I can't afford to not have. Kind of 
kind of tight in here. I think about $1,400 in parts to get it up to my spec, but we've got new cutters all the way across the front. Replaced a couple of the fingers on the reel. New new belt. And pumped up the tires. <laughs> That's all it needed. Just a small amount of maintenance. So, let's start on the backfield. See how she does. And then, uh, if everything's working just fine, we'll move over to the front field and get that done. Hopefully, Leroy can get that um, grain trailer or tipper trailer brought over to me. He said he'd try for this afternoon, so hopefully he finds the time. I'm not sure how much room I have behind me, but I know how much room I have in front of me. There we go. We are going to be dropping a straw swath because I do want to bale it. We're going to get every last ounce out of this crop that we can. completely full. I haven't seen Leroy come down the driveway with that trailer yet, so we're going to give him a call, find out how long he's going to be, or if we need to go pick it up ourselves. I see him there. He said he was just down the road. All right, we should be able to get this tipped out pretty quick. I wonder if he'll come into the... Uh, he probably doesn't know I'm in this field. All right. We'll go meet him in the yard. Yeah, this is all right. We'll help him get unhooked. We'll get that hooked up to the 4400. And we'll let him get on his way.
right, we're all set, ready to go again. That wasn't Leroy, that was his kid Davy. Not a very talkative guy. Nice guy, though. Okay, and that is this field done. Both of my wheat crops are off. Maybe he's gonna hop out and go home. We'll pay him for his time, of course. Um, maybe not too much, because he did miss a few spots, but I mean, this is his first time running this tractor. There he goes, he's off. We'll go tip this and we'll find out exactly how much we uh, we had on these fields. And there goes Davy. Nice kid. I think we'll uh, we'll call him back for a few more jobs here and there as we go. I still haven't figured out why he went to Britain for a couple of years, but said he did some contracting up there. Definitely seems to know his way around a combine. Three percent on these. They're getting close. Before the day is over, it's only three o'clock. I think we'll jump onto this. It's got to be almost empty. Yep, yeah. empty. Got the auger off. Get it out of the way of the hatch. Shut it off, it can just stay there. Close the bin up. Yeah, and there we go, just shy of 38,000 liters of wheat. That's, you know what? That's not too bad. We'll find somewhere to park this. We'll get that combine back. I think 
Maybe just right here would be just fine. Probably going to move it a few more times before I find a place I'm happy with it, but for now, it stays there.
All right, and that is everything bailed up. And if we check, we got 18 bales this time. So four more than we got last round. So leaving it for that extra month to get that extra step resulted in four more bales. Not bad. Not bad. And if we check, we are 82% of a 19th bale. So I'm not going to chase that. We're just going to put the baler aside for now. I do have to do all the straw here shortly. But the tractor needs diesel first. Kick that off. I'm going to run down to the gas station. And I don't think I'm going to do time lapse on this field or the other field for getting the straw bales. I think we'll just do a boot. We'll see when it's done. And there we have it. There's all 20 straw bales picked up. I definitely don't want to put them over here with the silage bales. Those are all going to have to go on their own spot. Yeah, now space is becoming quite a premium. So I think what I'll do is I'll set them down here. There's not really much else I can do. I do really love that auto load feature. That is an absolute lifesaver when it comes to bales. So, sorry about your immersion, but this is this is the way. run through these guys up quick Well guys, I want to thank you all for staying to the end of the video here. Again, thank you to everyone who's watched this, subscribed, everyone who's engaged. Thank you so much. We'll see you next time. And don't forget, if you haven't already subscribed, why not? It's free. Helps me out a little bit. Let's me know that you really want to see more of this. And we'll see you guys next time.